Good morning, everybody. My name is Erica, and this is Highway 49 RC. If you're a regular on the channel and want to support me in doing builds just like this one, consider becoming a member of the channel. Anyways, today we are getting back on the MOA build. You guys have been bugging me about it. Last time we built this chassis, or the last three episodes, we built this chassis. The last episode, we built this custom machine skid plate which I'm still really proud of. This whole chassis looks great. Today, as you know by the title of the video, we are building suspension for this thing. I'm gonna do upper and lower links along with shocks. Um, for the lower links, I'm gonna be using 5 16 round aluminum instead of my normal quarter inch because I want to do some pretty dubious bends on the rear links do something like that, big old curve in it, so I want it to be extra strong. Also, a quick apology on taking so long to get this video out because I originally wanted to try and model the links in Fusion, like I had mentioned, but I just kind of gave up on trying to get myself to do that because I really just did not want to, didn't have any motivation to, and after thinking about it a while, I kind of just came up with what I want my links to be anyway, so I just said, screw it. We're just gonna make some freaking links. As far as parts go, I've got some three and four millimeter rod ends. The four millimeter larger rod ends are for the lower links with the larger rod. Three and four millimeter link screws. The four millimeter link screws are for, again, the lower links because I'm using five sixteenths there. Got the beef tubes, quote, beef tips. Um, they're the little spring perches for the Losi Mini T springs, which I have the front springs here. If you recall, I used the rear springs on my shafty. The reason I'm using the shorter front springs is because I'm using the mid-length Traxxas Big Bore shocks. 2660 are the short ones, or just quote long. 2661 are extra long, which are these, and 2662, I think, are extra, extra long, which is what I have back in my shafty right now. Let's go ahead and slice these guys open pull the shocks out because I do need to start with modding the caps on these. If you're not familiar with what the cap mod is, essentially all we're doing is taking the shock cap off, drilling a hole through it, and cutting off this upper loop. So instead of having an eyelet here, basically there's just a screw that comes out with a rod end on top. Basically just allowing for better shock articulation when crawling. Shock caps and diaphragms have been removed. Let's go get these things cut, drilled, and tapped. While I'm waiting for my shock oil to settle, I figured I'd show you the progress of the cap. Starts off cut, drilled, and tapped here. Then I put a screw through it with Loctite on it, a lock nut on top of the screw, and then to finish it off, a rod end on top of that. Nice thing is you can put any length rod end you want on here. So on my shafty, I have some really long rod ends so that I can clear my behind the axle steering. Or if you wanted it shorter, you could do an even shorter rod end than this. Shocks are done. As you can see, I went with the firm springs for now. We'll see how that goes. I may need to go for the softer ones because there's gonna be less sprung weight on this rig. But for now, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time off camera messing with the chassis and the axles and the shocks, trying to get everything positioned right so that then we can measure four links. This is one of the jankiest mock-ups I've ever done, but it's roughly in position how I want it. I think it's a little bit too long. However, the shocks ended up being longer than I anticipated, so 
I'm just gonna roll with it for right now. The axles are pretty wide, so I think proportionally it's about right. Um, the issue though is just tire size. Like I think the tires are gonna be a bit too small, so I may have to go up to the larger, like super 3.8 style wheels and tires. We'll kind of have to see though, once we actually test this thing out. For the shocks being too long, if I need to, I can make some brackets to adjust the shock mounting point on the axle to be more centered over it. So then I can actually utilize some of these adjustment holes. Cause right now, front and rear, they're all the way in. So we'll kind of have to see what ends up being needed and how it performs out on the rocks. The rear link setup is going to look something like this. I used some welding wire to mock up uh, my link lengths, and I think that's roughly going to be the way it'll sit. Um, I'm concerned about interference right here on the upper and lower. Um, I may be able to do something really ridiculous and run the upper under the lower, which I think is kind of silly, defeats the purpose of the lower being bent as much as it is. But again, we'll kind of have to see how it turns out. If anything, I'm going to modify the upper rather than the lower because I have a limited amount of the 5 16 rod, which is what I'm going to be using for the lower link, mainly because of this massive bend. The front links are going to be a little bit more straightforward, pardon the pun. Um, the lower link for now is just going to be straight. I'm not really sure if a bend is going to be advantageous for this rig in the front link or not. So for now, I'm just going to make it straight. If it needs to be bent, I can bend it later. But I think for now, I'm going to stick with it being straight. Then the upper links are going to be bent downwards up in the front. So I need to basically clear this front cross member. And to do so, I need to bend the link down a bit. So hopefully that clears it. Hopefully it doesn't run into the motor, which is, oh boy, just below this link as well. Down here, like right below that bend is where the motor sits. So hopefully it doesn't run into the motor. I've got my lengths measured. I subtracted the length of two rod ends from each one. So I should have just the right lengths for all my links. So with that, I am ready to head out in the garage, start cutting up my aluminum and making some links. I got the links all done. To bend the larger radii, I used a just like hand tubing bender. I guess it's maybe a brake line bender or I don't know, just your standard Harbor Freight or Home Depot tubing bender. And then for these guys, I just put them in the vise. And to keep the holes in the end from collapsing in, I put a screw in there. So I say we get some rod ends on them and see how well we did.
I think we got it. This thing is absolutely ludicrous. The links all clear each other really nicely. Um, and the adjustment holes are perfect for getting them ju adjusted just the way I want. I had to make a few adjustments just to make sure everything clears, but like, I'll give you some close-ups, but all the links clear each other without hitting. I can adjust them a little closer if I want them to. Like, I can go almost all the way full shot compression without hitting anything. Like, freaking unbelievably ridiculous. I think I have these ones on backwards, but whatever. I'm going to deal with that off camera. Man. This thing is just absolutely insane. You want a shot of it from the front articulating? There you go. That is a lot of articulation right there. Not that something like this really needs a whole lot. It's more of a climbing type of rig. But still, freaking gnarly. I cannot stop looking at this thing, I gotta say. It's just amazing. The way that everything articulates so smoothly and freely, no binding or anything. I gotta say I'm pretty impressed. I'm a little disappointed with some of the craftsmanship on this that I did in a couple different areas. I know, I know, it's only shit that I'm gonna see, but it's, it still annoys me personally, but uh, ignoring that, this thing is insane absolutely crazy. I think I'm definitely gonna have to get bigger tires for this thing because these Ibexes I think are just going to be too small. Which is a little bit unfortunate because these were kind of expensive. But I think I am going to have to send them away, get rid of them, and we're going to come up with something better and go from there. In the next MOA episode, we are going to be doing electronics, getting everything wired up, putting our motors in, probably starting to mess with some of the radio mixing. That's gonna be a bit of a pain. I'm gonna have to do a bit of learning and reading about that, um, but we'll, we'll get to that next time. So with that, you guys, thank you all again so much for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. Please leave a big fat thumbs up if this does happen to be the first video that you have seen by me. Make sure you go down, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment down below as well if you enjoyed. As always, support me on Patreon, join my Discord server, follow me on Instagram at howie 49 underscore rc and if you can, become a member of the channel. All those things would be greatly appreciated and help me out a ton. But you guys, I hope you are excited for the next episode, just like I am, and I will see you all in the next one.